we just wanted to talk a little bit about healing because now that we're yeah. on that topic, obviously some people right. have had COVID and some people's symptoms are extremely significant and some people have passed away from that as well, especially the ones that I know that are in good health, relatively good health. It hasn't bothered them as much, but right. using quantum healing, I'm sure that I'm guessing some people have come to you to say, Richard, like I've got COVID or I've experiencing these symptoms. I, have you encountered okay. those um, scenarios? Energy healing uses this energy that flows through all living things. The Chinese have called it qi, the yogis call it prana, the Japanese call it ki. It's this life force energy or animating current of life. And a practitioner learns to use breathing and body awareness exercises and their love to move it through their body like you're a generator like you're creating this big battery of energy and you build up your charge really strong with the breathing and body simply exercises no belief system to accept then you sandwich the part that needs healing whether it's a long distance healing or the person right next door to you somebody's knee or whatever you just sandwich it and then you continue the breathing and body awareness and their body will match the vibration of your hands and their body and spiritual intelligence will figure out how to do the healing. The definition of a healer is someone who was sick and got well. A great healer is someone who is very sick and got well quickly. And the reason for this is the body heals itself. The cells heal themselves. I don't know how to heal anybody's cells but their body and spiritual intelligence knows exactly how to do that. Placebos don't work with people under general anesthesia, it doesn't work on infants, it doesn't work on animals. And we see infants and animals and people under general anesthesia responding really well to the energy. So this is just a general overview. Now, since the body heals itself, um, oh, I do have a COVID story. I'll just jump to that. I got COVID in March of last year. And I felt about 15% as sick as if I had a cold, but it wouldn't go away. I had it for like two weeks and it just always there. And my body wasn't defeating it or wasn't being defeated by it. It was just there. And it was very weird because I do everything to stay healthy. And then after two weeks, I started feeling the need to cough. So I just put my hands on my chest and moved my energy into my chest and within 10 or 15 minutes, I didn't feel the need to cough again. So then it took me another week and then I was well. I'm hearing from our practitioners that we can help relieve symptoms. I'm not going to call it a cure, but the body is the one that heals itself. And I'm jumping topics for a moment, but the height of irresponsibility is to lock people down and not encourage them to take zinc, vitamin D3, vitamin C, to get some exercise and to hang out outside more because the virus doesn't know how to be outside. It can't transmit while you're outside. It's just so irresponsible not to encourage health. You see, I'm not a virologist and this is third hand, but the, some of the experts that I trust, because we always have to trust experts since very few of us are virologists. And by the way, they don't even agree with each other because science is all about proving each other wrong all the time. So there's no consensus right now. But one thing I heard was that this virus may have been manufactured probably at the Wuhan lab. And because of certain ways that it was put together, it was like these two different viruses were joined together. And it doesn't, you see, a natural virus that was not created by a human being would be able to live outside because everything is outside except for our modern world. But this virus doesn't seem to be able to handle, you know, the sunlight and stuff and it doesn't survive outside very well. It's a very weak virus in that regard, uh, but it's incredibly virulent and it can occupy a person very quickly and have bad immune uh, functional aspects to it. So we're much safer outside. So outside eating is pretty darn safe, and, but it's when it's indoors and the air is circulating that, that people have more difficulty with it.